Hey, 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 you guys. Let me get kind of comfy. Wait for y'all to get on here. Y'all hear my squeaky chair? Somebody needs to come oil this chair. <laughs> Either that or I need to get a new one. It is squeaky. So let's invite our special guest. Wesley Roderick, Prophet Wesley, is going to be on here this evening, you guys. It's going to be so much fun. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Sharon. Hey, you guys. I already got my earbuds in. Oh, and thank you to Lori and also um, Kim. Thank you all so much. Do you see what they got me? Is that not just the bomb? Yes, I have tons of this adorable jewelry on. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. <laughs> Thank y'all. They are so sweet and adorable. Who's on here? Lori, Sherry, Ronnie, Brittany. Hey, you guys. Deborah. We're waiting for uh, Prophet Wesley. So if you see Wesley on here, somebody just let me know. Um, I'm going to make it to where he can add himself to the video. Send a request that way. So how are y'all doing this evening? What's up with y'all? I have had a fun time. Not that anybody necessarily wants to know, but I have, what, cleaned the litter box? So, yeah, y'all just needed to know that. <laughs> Taking the trash out. You know, done some normal stuff. The normal things have to be done. The day-to-day -day things have to be done as well. Let me see. Let me look over here. Just sort of keeping an eye out for our special guest, Prophet Wesley. Um, Y'all, uh, let people know that we're doing this video. Hey, Texas. Oh, you're in Texas. You guys, today, today was like 68 degrees here with a cold, like a cool, very cool breeze. I went to the gym and thought I was going to freeze. This is, I'm in Bristol, Tennessee. I'm telling you, it's like, it's probably 10, 15 degrees cool, you know, warmer everywhere else on the planet almost. <laughs> hey, Donna. Hey, darling. Hey, Callie. Uh-oh. What is that? No, we're not. Um, I don't know who that was. That's not our special guest. We're not inviting him on. So, uh, to come on the video is just for our special guest. Just for our special guest, you guys. And he will be on the video very soon. Who else is on here? I see Evangelist Musa, Lovette. Again, there's Donna, Debbie, Shelly, Bridget. Who else? Where are you from? I want to know y'all city and state. What are you guys doing? Y'all, I have my coffee cup ready. Yes. Mm, it's actually got tea in it. There is tea, milk, stevia. I see Callie, Alanda, Debbie, Raymond, and Lori, Pamela. Woohoo! Let me make certain. Yes, it's cinnamon invite. That's warm. It's 41 degrees here with threats of snow in the higher elevations. What? No way, Donna, for real. What on earth? Okay, so we got Georgia people on here. Dayton, Tennessee. Well, Ronnie McDowell, you and your family need to, I mean, McConnell, you and your family needs to come out here and uh, help me uh, get this prayer house going. But Tennessee is very long. So how far from Bristol are you? <laughs> how far is that? So we've got Kansas City. Hey, Ashley, she's in the house. Debbie, Sue Aunt Zan. Ooh, Florida. Suzanne's in Florida. Missouri, that's Lori. Hey, hey, hey. You guys, this is a little unusual. I'm not seeing our special guest right now. Does anybody see Prophet Wesley on here? Wesley Roderick. <gasps> it is 74 and sunny where you are, Lori. Oh, man. But that's good. That is good. Hey, Shafiq. Hey, Shafiq. From Ohio, there's Lori. Louisville, Kentucky. Come on, come on. Hey. Texas is Callie. Tony. Tennessee. Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Well, Tony, you and your family, how far are y'all from this prayer house? Come on. Hey, you guys, we do have that event coming up uh, June 7th through the 9th. 
register. It's only $25 to register. You do not, oh, you're three and a half hours away, Ronnie. Oh, hey, Ginger from North Carolina. You guys, you do not have to uh, be one of my students or one of uh, Wesley Roderick's students to attend. He's a special guest speaker. I'm still working on the uh, praise team. I'm getting uh, that situated. You don't see him? Somebody shoot him a message. Maybe he can't find it or something. Uh, this is going to sound really weird, but the, the other day, literally one of my guests, um, Apostle Barbara Mitchell, her daughter and several of the other people couldn't see the video. They just couldn't find it. I'm telling you, it's like it didn't show up. It was like it was non-existent. <laughs> they couldn't find it on my timeline. It wasn't in the news feeds. They couldn't, you know, it was, wow. Oh, there he is. There he is. Look at that. So let's get him on camera here. Or he can invite himself to the video. Nope, I don't want to pin the comment. I'd like to invite Wesley on the video. Oh, come on, Facebook. Bring Wesley on camera. $25. Hey, I couldn't, I totally forgot about getting headphones and I can't find mine. Oh, no. Oh, no. How's it sound? Everybody, does it sound horrible? It sounds, it sounds horrible. horrible. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe if I take mine out. Um, let me. I'll log off real quick. Okay. Okay. How's? Ooh. Yeah, it sounds. It sounds rough. I'll log off real quick. Give me a moment. I'll find them. Okay. Okay. Where did I leave them? Was it the gym bag? Was it my purse? Was it my wallet purse? When's the la what is the last purse that I actually had? Did I leave them on the table in the den or did I stick them downstairs next to the, you know how that is when you're trying to find something. Um, so I'm just glad that uh, y'all get to see more, especially on these live streams, you get to see more of the personal side probably of us. Oh, can you not hear me? Can't hear me. Let me reset these real quick. I'll reset them. Stick them in. Can you hear me now? I feel like I'm a commercial, you guys. I feel like I'm a commercial. Let's get the light back up on that. That should be charging. Oh, good, Nancy, you can hear me. But like I was saying, May, uh, not May, pardon, June, come on, this next month, June 7th through the 9th, is it's um, Apostolic Emergence Conference. It's also, uh, my students are graduating. There's baptisms. You do not have to be one of my students to be baptized. Uh, but again, just let us know you're coming. I see Erin on here. Hello, Erin. Bless you. Awesome woman of God. And she's got a mentoring program. She's got a mentoring program. You need to check that out. It's a prophetic mentoring. If you need some of that. Um... Check out her timeline. It's Erin Bavayas. And I probably butchered her last name. So, <laughs> sorry, darling. <laughs> hey, Danielle. Hey, Danielle. Prophet is telling you hello. Hello. Uh, Wesley is finding his ear his earbuds, you know how that is. Uh, I know I do that all the time, especially when I'm headed out to the gym. I'm like, where did I put them? Where did I put them? I can't find them in the gym bag. Can't find them here. Can't find them there. <laughs> the first time I wore these ones, you guys, and got on the treadmill, I thought to myself, what if this falls out my ear? Do you realize how expensive these things are? <laughs> so, but now I've got used to the way they feel. I can tell if they're actually in there or a little loose. You know, I can tell what's going on. I'm more familiar with them. So, hey, you guys, hey, hey, hey. But again, back to that event. It's Friday night, June 7th. Okay, starts at 7 p.m. You can get here as early as 6. Come on. Um, I've got students who are coming in earlier than that. Uh, many of the women are staying overnight or some of the married couples. Um, and I've already got the married couples filled up, technically. That's So, right now, it's just single ladies. The men, y'all will have to either, there's a holiday inn right in uh, Bristol, Virginia, um, there is in Johnson City, there's a Holiday Inn. There's probably some other hotels that are even closer. 
uh, within range. Once you register, you'll get the address to the venue, but it is in Bristol, Virginia. And then uh, the next day, we start at 10 a.m. Saturday. I'm telling you, 10 to 12, power packed. Wesley Roderick is speaking Friday night. He's also speaking Saturday morning. Um, we've got praise and worship lined up. Come on, you guys. And then from uh, 2 to 4, 10 to 12 is like lunch. Come on. I mean, 12 to 2. Sorry. <laughs> it's like lunch. 2 to 4 is the baptisms, okay? Um, and then you get from 4 to 6 to kind of do whatever you can. And service doesn't start that night, Saturday night till 7. Okay, but around six, if you want to show up, mingle, come on, that kind of thing. Um, but that'll give you time to get clean back up after you get baptized. You don't have to. Yeah, you can see my cats. Y'all, I sit here and begin to talk. They are running back and forth like a little powerhouse energizer kitty bunnies. You know, they're just, and they're attacking each other. But anyway, so back to this. And then seven o'clock that night, uh, the students, they'll, they'll just be recognized for graduating. Come on, they're going to be recognized for graduating. And any that wanted certified, licensed, or ordained will be, that'll happen at that time. Um, and, you know, sling some all. No, I'm kidding. I like to make everything funny just because uh, I've had some times in my life where everything was not so great. You know what I'm saying? So anytime I can make things funny, even though that is going to be a very serious night, very serious evening. And then Prophet Wesley, of course, he's bringing an awesome word. There's going to be great praise and worship. And then the next day before you all go, and some people may have to leave Saturday evening. I understand that. But then Sunday morning, again, uh, probably uh, I need to look back at the event. It was either 10 or 1030. <laughs> Or meeting. Uh, I need to look at the event, my own self. Uh, and yes, I did write that up, but you know how that is. I've got so many other things planned and going on as well, different types of things. Hey, Nick. Uh, and so that'll be like Sunday morning worship. Come on with a, uh, a, another word, awesome word. Uh, there he is. Yay. Woo, woo, woo. Tonight's going to be awesome. Fiery. I'm telling you, I can feel fire running up and down my back. I, I feel fire whistle. right now. Amen. I feel like I should be fired right now too for like no. not I'm like I don't I'm still like I don't know where my wireless headphones are so I oh, feel no. I feel very archaic but um <laughs> you know Praise first, God you found something you know yeah I'm just found I, I'm glad I found these um like I don't know if any anyone remembers what these are these are the headphones that come with your phone um so <laughs> uh yeah. But uh, I have some tangled ones. <laughs> see now, now you have the AirPods, and I'm over yeah. here with the with the regular ones, and so, you know, we switched places, and okay. uh, but that's perfectly fine. Like, it's it, why not have a season of upgrade in Tiffany's life, and not oh, using the thank uh, you. why and using the uh, <laughs> the Apple AirPods there, but uh, how's they everybody doing so tonight? Good. How's everybody doing tonight? How are you doing, Tiffany? I'm doing good. I'm telling you, I feel so energized. My cats are energized. You would think I sprayed peppermint everywhere. They're just running around like little energizer. <laughs> my rats cats, or my something. cats are energized. I don't even know what to resp I don't. I don't even know how to respond to that one. <laughs> <laughs> they can feel the anointing. I actually prayed for a dog one evening. These people, I went to their yeah. home and they said, "Will you please pray for our dog and bless it?" It went through a lot and it started getting gray hair way too early. Even the vet said it was too early. Something you know, just shocked its system. And I thought I've never been asked to pray for an animal maybe except for a chicken one time. And I was like, uh, okay. So I just put my hand out and I don't know what I expected to happen. That's uh, awesome. You guys, but I put my hand out towards that animal on a couch across the room from me and a power shot out of my hand, hit that animal. And that animal was sound asleep. It woke up and went, <gasps> And it looked at me, and then it looked at its people, you know, its humans, you know, and it's looking back at me, and it literally leaps off the couch and runs to them terrified. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> I <laughs> bet. The same anointing that hits people can hit animals. So, um, I mean, anyway. when you think, we, let's, go, let's go weird. Let's go weird now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, we, like, I've heard so many stories from like farmers and ranch hands and different people of that nature that have, you know, like they, they go out and I love the fact that your coffee cup is like the size of my head. Um, I, I want a coffee cup <laughs> the size of my head. And so like, I, I hear all, I've heard these stories that, you know, all these people like have prayed for like, you know, cows and chickens and dogs and different stuff like that. 
And like, why not? Like, why, why, like, you think of Francis of Assisi, um, who, you know, is most known for like, you know, where there's strife, let me be peace, that sort of thing, that sort of prayer. And Francis of Assisi was known like, but having a, like a spiritual gift of being able to communicate to animals, to nature. And it wasn't like a new age sort of thing. It was something that the Lord graced him with, you know, and he actually stepped away from the riches and everything that he had available to him. And then he would actually be out. Uh, he, he chose to live amongst those who were less fortunate than himself, those who would can be considered poor. And he chose to live amongst them and to actually minister to them. And he forsook his, his, his quote unquote, I guess, birthright, if you would, um, to live amongst those who were really in need in, in many ways. And so oh. I, you know, like, why not? Why couldn't you pray over, you know, like your <clears throat> dog or your cat, in your case, your cats or, you know, whom, whatever it is, why <clears throat> not? You know, um, uh, if God, if God created them, why can't we, why can't we pray for them? Come you know, on. and now, you know, people are going to go take this probably extra step further. And Wesley's talking about like dogs going to heaven. <laughs> like, listen, this isn't a Disney movie, you know? Uh, and so like, I, but I encourage, like pray over your pets, have a Holy ghost chihuahua. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, those chihuahuas need help. Right. I mean, I'm, you know, they get too temperamental. They get too individual, specific, owner protective mode. And I'm like, Ooh. oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Like I, I just want, I just want to say, like, if you're watching right now, like, share this broadcast because if it's starting out uh, about talking about praying for dogs and animals and all this other stuff that's going on right now, who knows? where this broadcast will go. Like if it's starting weird, it's just going to get weirder from here. And like, there is, there's no agenda. Like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm all like, take it over. Uh, there, there's no agenda. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Uh, I, you know, I'm just a guest and I'm just like, pets. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so far pets. Yeah. Like, you know, um, but, uh, let, you know, uh, but I'm just, man, the anointing's already here. Yeah. The anointing's already here. Very like every, every, every yoke, every burden, every, uh, just everything that's not the Lord, let it just be broken off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Let it just be broken mm. completely off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Let every burden, let every, every heavy thing that's been resting upon you, like let the, even the, uh, just the burdens of like parenthood and leadership and the things that we go, Oh, those are just normal stresses. Those are just normal things. Let those be broken off of you right now in the name of Jesus. And may there be a new level of liberty and freedom for you right now. Let there be a new level of liberty and freedom for you right now in the name of Jesus. I just see shackles being broken off yeah. right now. And Hey, Richard, I see you come on there. Uh, let shackles just be broken off right now. Let there be a greater level, a new level of freedom than you've ever experienced before. You know, the, you know, the Lord said that like, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. Well, then, you know, and you think you go back in a, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So there should be, like, we should be into a place where at all provision, no stress, no anxiety, no, 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 none of that junk building up. But really what should be there is just the, the rest and the ease of the Lord, like in, like in Job, just the cream and the butter. And so, Lord, we just prophesy right now the cream and the butter. Let the cream and the butter just come before us right now. And we just begin to walk it out right now. Just let that supernatural peace and rest come right now. And let it just manifest in our lives. Thank you, Father. Ooh, can y'all feel that? If you could feel the anointing, you need to type that in here. You just need to encourage people. Hey, Mary. Hello, Jesse, Liv, and Mr. Richard. I'm just telling you, there's so many awesome, good, and wonderful friends on here. So many different leaders are even on here. And you know what? 
everyone on here is leading in some way, shape, form, or fashion in some arena, wherever yeah. God's placed you to be an influence. Come on. And so I just encourage you, if you're feeling the anointing right now, to encourage other people. Let them know you can feel it, that you're feeling something in your home. I'm feeling it here. I'm telling you, I am wrapped in a heat. I, I, it's like I've stepped into a dryer. Uh, but it's like an I love inferno. It. And, and it's blowing and it's fire and it's wind all around me. I mean, I began to see it. I was uh, literally, it's going to sound a little strange, but I was just like, I'm going to sit down and rest for a few minutes and pray in my prayer language. And I'd already been, you know, worshiping in the den and all. Okay. But I, I laid kind of laid across the bed and I was like, ah, well, I get to do that for about 30 seconds and I get to get up again. And literally, <laughs> as soon as I did that and went, ah, the fire descended just all in the room. And I was Come like, on. well, this is nice. Don't you just love it? <laughs> yeah. This this is what it's about. You know, and no striving. Like, like, there's no agenda here. There's no, you know, like, purpose to do anything other than to just be right now. Like, and if this could be some type of, like, Holy Ghost spiritual spa of an online broadcast, you know, I, I know Tiffany has no no – no objections to that. I definitely don't. The, to be perfectly honest, like the Lord doesn't even need us doing this. You can actually obtain this in 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 your own home, in your own house. Like that's the beauty of Jesus going to the cross is that he tore the veil. Candace, thank you so much for spelling my name correctly. It's so far and in, in between. Like people will even comment on my own on my own status and spell my name wrong somehow. But <laughs> Because it's not common for a T in there. So, but, uh, you know, I just, like, you can actually obtain this and get a hold of this yourself. There's, like, there's really, like, like you know, I'm sure Jesus thinks that we're special as individuals. But in all reality, like, there's nothing special about either one of us. Like, there's no, like, special anointing that I carry or I have or that Tiffany has that is actually not obtainable by pressing in and pursuing God. Like, there's a level of it where you have it, but then there's a level of where you need to obtain it at the same time. And it's I often say that we're just stepping into the identity that has been laid before us because of what has happened on the cross. And when Jesus went to the cross, the veil had had been torn and so all the degrees of separation that we call sin have been completely torn from us and so we have mm. access to go into the holy of holies which was prophesied in jeremiah then later spoke about again in hebrews saying that the days are coming that i will actually give you a new covenant and no longer will a friend teach no longer will a friend teach his friend oh. but i oh. will teach them and i'll write my statutes upon their heart and i will be their god and they will be my people and that was a promise that we have of a new covenant relationship of having intimacy with him. And that's why Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you because they put the value system of the external uh, giftings of the manifestation of signs, wonders, miracles, prophecy above the actual intimacy of having it with the Lord, that nothing, nothing at all will ever supersede having intimacy with the Lord. And we as a body are starting to come into a place where we're actually able to come into um, being able to distinguish those who are flowing. Listen, the gifts are without repentance. Come God on. is not re like revoking somebody simply because of a lack of intimacy. Because Paul said, at least the gospel's being preached, at Ooh! least something's being done. But we sometimes mistake people who are walking in a place of gifting, but not walking in a place of intimacy. And the, the the way to easily tell the difference is the level of impact that they're having on those around them. You know a tree by its fruit and people, and don't listen to, oh, it's just not a season for bearing fruit. You know, the last time a tree said that to Jesus, he condemned it. Oh, oh. The last time a tree told Jesus, it's not the right time. It's not the right season for fruit. Jesus condemned it. And that's why it's so imperative that we have intimacy with him. Listen, like, and I'm not even like, I, and I, I'm an advocate of the written word of God, the logos. But you also got to understand, Jesus was the living logos. Jesus is also the rhema. 
And so to come into, come into relation with him, you got to have that. You can't just know the book. You got to know the author. I know that sounds incredibly cliche and like super like, you know, Sunday school 101, yeah. but so many times we are, I just kind of came in here firing. Uh, sometimes we just got to, sometimes we just got to come um, boldly before the throne and actually take a hold of what God has for us. You know, like in, we just, we get, we cower away, but it has everything. This is the, this is the one thought that I actually had um, before coming on Tiffany was yeah. many, uh, m- the reason why we have trouble with understanding how the father speaks to us is because we misunderstand the father. Our initial mm. precept of the father will ultimately dictate and determine everything else in how we perceive God. And so if we don't understand that the Father is full of love and mercy and kindness and, and grace, listen, he's also, he disciplines those he's loved. Don't get me wrong. Like those of you who have kids, like you're going to discipline your children when they're acting a fool. Don't get, don't get me wrong. And just likely like, you know, when, when, you're, when your child reaches for the stovetop, you're going to, at an instinct, you're going to bat their hand away and it might hurt them for a moment. They may not necessarily know how to necessarily uh, process mentally why you just batted their hand away, but you know it was for their better and for that the actual the you know the welfare of their being. And so sometimes we don't understand why God bats our hand away. We feel like our world is huh. over. Like I remember like I was you know I was with my niece and she, like to her I'm Uncle West. Like n- like she she can literally just like you know go kick a puppy and I'm like did you have fun? You know, not really, but like, that's the way that she, that's the way she perceives reality for her is that uncle Wes is her best. Like uncle Wes is like her greatest advocate, her greatest fan. And she can do no, no wrong in my eyes. But the day that I, the, the day that I, like she went and like, she reached for something and I was like, no. And I batted her hand down because I was concerned for her and you would think that I stole her favorite toy or like her candy and then ate it in front of her and told her she couldn't have it or something because wow. her wor- she didn't have the, the ability to process why I would bat her hand away and see God's ways are so much higher than our ways. They're so much farther along than our ways that we can't begin to say that we fully understand. I love it. Bobby Connor says we've become all too familiar with a God. We barely even know. Ooh. And so, like we, we barely know him. And like we, we, we read a book or we read a bunch of books or we sing a bunch of songs and we think that we have this idea or this understanding of who he is. And there's so much more. It's just like, you know, to, get, to go into further more like life coaching cliches is like, it's just like the tip of an iceberg. Only 10% is on the outside. The other 90% is below the surface. And we got to wow. be willing to dive deep uh-huh. into that situ- that scenario, that, that place, mm-hmm. uh, of those depths. And the, it's dark. You know, it's like the Lord says that I hide myself with inside of a dark cloud. And, you know, I just want to encourage you in this moment to just be willing to go into the depths, go into the place that you can't see. Ex- like, You know, it was said that Einstein discovered the theory of relativity by imagining an empty space and then walking in it. I encourage you to find that dark, empty space in the recesses of your of your of your spirit and go explore where the Lord is around you. You would be ultimate. I think you would be incredibly and very pleasantly surprised to find out where God truly is in your midst right now. You would be, you'd be pleasantly surprised to find out where God is. And it's going to be in the very least likely place. It's going to be in the very most unlikely scenario in the unlikely situation. And you will find God. And I think that's a lot of, I think that there's a season coming to the body of Christ where that they are actually going to come into a place where so much of what they have endured and experienced will make sense. Amen. It will make Amen. sense. Like I feel like so like if you if you've gone through a situation that you would like 
You have, like, it sucked. The situation was horrible, but you have no idea as to why. Just type me into the chat. Just type me into the chat because I'm going to share something to you that I believe that is, that I believe that the Lord is going to be doing in this, in, in a, in a, in a new season. Yeah, cuddle with Yeshua. His name's Jesus. Like I hear he likes to know Jesus. But anyways, and so like with this, as I believe that what the Lord is going to do is he's going to, like you're suffering and that dark night of the soul and the turmoil Come that on. you experienced was not in vain. Mm. I'm telling Amen. you right now that it was not in vain. It was not. Listen, it serves a greater purpose. You don't necessarily understand as to why right now, but I'm telling you right now that it actually serves a greater purpose more than you maybe can comprehend right now. Just like my, just like my little niece when you know, she was like two and a half, three years old when that, when this happened and she didn't understand it, but you know what? Now I can sit down now that she's four. I can sit down and have a little bit more of a real conversation. It's like, you know why I did this is because I love you. It's because I don't want anything to happen to you. It's because I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want you to be injured. I don't want this. I don't want that. And now she goes, okay, Uncle Wes, I'm sororry for not listening. And so now, (laughs) and and then she doesn't do it. That's repentance. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And so I believe, hey, Todd, what's going on? Todd Michael Schwartz, see you on there, man. Bless you, dude. Thank you. Um. I believe that right now, those, those, that purpose, you're longing to understand the purpose. And I believe that God's going to make it make sense. God's going to make it make sense. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you were talking and everything, I just started, you know, thinking about even reminiscing on situations God has brought me through. Uh, There were times where after the effect, after the fact, okay, because I, God knows how I am better than I know my own self, and I can remember going to the Lord, why didn't you tell me this? I cannot believe you didn't tell me this. You tell, you know, in some respects, you know, I just talk with God like that sometimes, you know, just have a real conversation with him, okay, right. just being real. Sometimes he does things or things happen, and I'm like, why did you not tell me that? Why did you hide that from me? And he would just, he would tell me. Sometimes yeah. he would wait till I calmed down. He wouldn't tell me if I was angry and demanding. He'd wait till I calmed down. And then out of the blue, he'd say, well, because of this. Well, this is the reason. Because you know how you are when you do X, Y, Z. And you would have uh, not listened. Or you wouldn't have understood me. Or you know you didn't understand me then, but now you do. And I'm like, <sighs> "Yeah, fine. Fine. You're wrong. Right. I'm wrong. You're wrong. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you no, for I, saving I mean, me. <laughs> I think, you know, like... I, went, I, I wrote an article a number of years ago, like, basically about equating life to a country music. And uh, it's going to sound really weird. <laughs> but, like, there's a song by Garth Brooks called The Dance. And it basically is like, I could have done without the pain, but I would, and I wouldn't have known how it all would end, but then I would have missed the dance. Ooh. See, sometimes if we, know, if we knew that something was going to go awry or go a little crazy – a little crazy. Yeah. We would we would throw the baby out with the bathwater, and we would miss the dance in the midst of it. And some and so part of it is having that that perspective of like you know what, like this, you know it's kind of like what is it like that Dr. Seuss meme that flies around Facebook, you know, and it's like don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Wow. Sometimes it's a matter of perspective, like you know don't don't cry over the spilt milk in the kitchen, you got a whole gallon in the fridge. Like, you know, sometimes we just have to have a a, a much different perspective of how we're looking at things. And it's so easy to to pick up a a pessimistic uh, perspective of towards like life events and circumstances and situations. But it's, it's so much better for us if we actually just have a, a, an actual positive outlook towards things that actually begins to dictate sometimes people go uh honestly when we have a negative perspective like to kind of bring this into a biblical perspective so when we have a negative perspective or a negative attitude towards things we begin to actually become self-fulfilling prophecy we begin we begin conditioning our minds so much and rewiring our mind 
to actually begin to only view things in, the, in that narrow scope of reality. But we have wow. to come, like there was a time before, the, before television, there was a time that people thought that they understood like 80% of reality. And then with the, with the invention wow. of television, it realized that what the, the actual measurement of reality that we understood as humanity was less than like 1% or something to that effect. And so like we are like what we understand as reality, even with the internet and with Facebook and all this other Come stuff, on. like we're advancing so quickly and it's easy for us to become very haughty in our, in our mentality and our mindsets, Ooh. but Come on. it's, 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 mm. We're we're barely we barely we barely got a hold of it. Ooh-wee. We barely got a hold of it. And so there's wow. so just so much, so much of the Lord that's available to us right now. Like <laughs> you said this was gonna be a supernatural like whatever like, yeah. supernatural conversation broadcast. Because wow. half this stuff I'm like, why do I even recollect ninety percent of this stuff? And wow. um it's, it's amazing. Like we, we have the ability to access the ancient of times through the Lord. Like Ooh. time is nothing. Come on. Time Come on. is nothing. <laughs> look, like look, look at it. You know, look at it from the Lord's perspective. Ooh. He, he said, she said, his mother said, Jesus, they're out of wine. And he said, it's not yet my time. (laughs) And then like 12 (laughs) seconds later, hey, Patricia, (coughs) like 12 (laughs) seconds later, (laughs) it's like, all right, I want you to fill up these vessels with water. And then he turns the water into wine. How did it go from not yet my time? And then like 12 seconds later, all of a sudden being time. That is so amazing. I'm telling you. The Lord is outside of time. Yes, he is. If if one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years can become like one day. I don't even know why I like watches, to be perfectly honest. Like. You want me to give some time testimony? uh, Let's hear some time stuff. (laughs) And I'm going to kind of browse around me to see if I can find where I put my headphones. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to tell y'all, you guys, I had seen the Lord like many different times in my life where I was like, Lord, I can remember I had to be in an appointment. And you might think, well, that was such a silly thing. It may seem silly in the end. I needed to get to an appointment and I needed a good five to 15 minutes. I said, Lord, just give me five extra minutes. I just need five extra minutes. I wanted to put mascara on. And this is, um, you know, because it was just a few years ago when I started experimenting more with, say, putting mascara and eye stuff on, okay? And so um, you might think, well, how frivolous or how trivial or who cares? Just get to your appointment. But do you know, I looked at the clock and suppose it was like five minutes after the hour. And, you know, I'm supposed to be there on the hour, but they give you to 15 minutes. I'm five minutes away. So I was going to be there. But I, anyway, I look back at the clock. Now, it's five minutes after. And I, can't, I had looked at it over and over again. It's still five, six minutes. Come on. I'm doing the eye stuff, and I go, oh, I'm going to be probably after the 15-minute period, and they're going to tell me to come back. You know, doctor's offices, these appointments, these kind of things. I was like, great. They're probably going to send me away. I was, and I look at the clock, and it's five minutes till. Oh, wow. Five minutes till the hour. And that's just a few minutes. But then there have been times I've been driving in my car driving in my car and for whatever reason i don't know if y'all are familiar with the spartanburg greenville area there's this highway 85 and every almost every single time of exit it's always exit 63 hmm. it was like suddenly i i felt something internal i felt something just shoom. and next thing i know i'm pulling into the church you know i'm a little evidently i made it a lot further down the interstate than i thought i get off pull into the church the church that I was attending, I walk inside and I'm like, man, nobody's here in the parking lot. It's not even raining. What's wrong with people? They all decided not to come today. Usually they only act like this when it's raining outside. You know, they act like they're going to melt. I'm waiting. I'm, you know, minutes go by, you know, and I look over at this one woman. I said, my gosh, what time is it? Why are people not here? She says, oh, it's still early. And I'm like, it can't be early, honey. You realize how long it takes me to drive here? And I was already leaving late. 
I looked at my clock, it took me eight minutes to get there. And that was a 20 minute drive if I was flying like a maniac doing 90 to 100 mile wow. an hour or 40 minutes. You know, th 30 was about average, 30 to 35 minutes. Eight minutes. I left my little townhouse and got to the church in eight minutes flat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So time, God's no respecter of time. No. He can fast forward it. He can rewind it. He can uh, hold it still. Come on. We've got examples in the Bible, you know, of all kinds of different stuff that the Lord can do. Absolutely. I mean, we are, we are without excuse, um, really, when it comes down to uh, doing just about anything. Like, we have the ability. We have the technology, like, and people, you know, every generation thought some form of technology was oh. of the devil. Oh. Like, there's people who thought drums were of the devil. There were I people know. who thought, like, Banchos. you know, there's, I'm sure there's people that think flags or shofars are of the devil. Um, <laughs> oh, my. Anybody who sat in the front row of a church service, probably. Um, but, <laughs> kidding, <laughs> kidding. But the Lord, like, listen, like, the Lord has more than enough for you. Amen. More than enough. There, you are, like, you are not lacking anything. You're not. And most people have a hard mm -hmm. time believing that that they're that you're not lacking anything. You're simply just getting it up to the point of coming into your identity of I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. That you're being taken care of. That you, the Lord is taking care of you. That he's every need and every desire that you have and more than enough. That more than enough. And if we began to understand how to operate from the, the opposite of a poverty mindset. Notice how I didn't say spirit. It's not a spirit. It's a mindset. It's a form of thinking. Come on, that's it. And if we could begin to learn how to operate at a, a weight in the opposite, you know, like one of the things that I do, anytime that I feel the pressure of finances creep up on me, here's, here's what I immediately do. I give. Like I don't, I don't necessarily go into like and find like the most blessed awesomeness ministry. I find the people that I know are in need, like you know, and if it's like a friend or whatever, and like and they hurt, and I overheard something, or you know, uh, whatever it might be. Anytime I feel that pressure of finances come about, I go in the opposite nature of that thing, and I begin to sow seeds in the opposite, whatever it is. And so like if it's if it's you know, stress or anxiety or whatever, I begin to sow into the opposite of that. If it's, you know, as far as uh, monetarily and, and financially, I go into the opposite of that. And we have to learn that we have, a, we have, there's an authority and a power that we have that we can prophesy with our actions and that we can actually begin to break generational type mindsets of again like notice how I said curses it's it's learned behavior that ultimately gets passed down generationally no difference than grandma's cornbread is probably grandma's you know need to script pennies and why but she grew up there under a different time you know mm -hmm. and so we have to come into a place of uh, begin to operate in the opposite of what's going on around us. And when we can, when, when there, when there's all this other stuff, we got to begin to operate in the opposite of that. And there's areas of our life where we, where we need to operate in the opposite of that thing, whatever it might be. Amen. I don't even know where I'm going with that right now. I'm just like, well, I'm, I just want to say, I saw that wave and I was like, let's ride yeah. that. Let's ride that, I'm telling you. And with regards to, say, finances, with regards to anything that I have a need of or mm -hmm. uh, might be in lack of, it could be anything from relationships. It could have been like 
you know, anytime in the past I needed a job or whatever it was I needed or divine strategies, I go to the Lord. I actually right. envision him what I've seen him look like when he's come to me before God's come to me. I, you know, we're face to face with each other. So I'll try to imagine him and kind of, you know, I'll be worshiping, thanking him, all this kind of stuff. And I'll get before the Lord and I'm like, this is going on. This is going on. Um, I'm not coming to you complaining, but I am saying this, 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 and this, and it violates your word because your word says this, 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 and this. It right. says you do provide. It says you are this and all these awesome things. And so I know you're not like some bad, evil father that, you know, social services and the popo would want to come take me away from you. So the devil's lying to me. Yes. I know. So the devil's lying to me. And so what do you have to say about this? And usually I just stop and I just look and I just stare at him. And one time I did this, well, actually more than once, about two or three different times I have done this. And he got a horrible, mad looking look on his face. But see, you got to know who you are when you see God angry. I had to recognize in that moment he wasn't angry at me. Come I could have panicked and fled the throne room, you know, fled from his face and his presence. But he was like, mm. And when he did that, I was like, okay, well, he's about to beat a devil down. It's not me. In the name of Jesus, I believe in Lord, you love me, and you're not angry at me. But I brought some of your attention. What did he do? One of these times, he had, he literally, from out of nowhere, he just went like this and pulled out of his hands and stuff. And it looked like Monopoly play cartoon money. And he threw it at me, and I caught it. And then I caught that. There was a bunch of loose of it, plus a great big old bag of it landed. And there was all kinds of coins and gold and all this stuff. And I caught it. What happened in the natural? Now, number one, within 30 minutes, I started getting money coming in. But it was about three hours before a significant amount came in. And then within about three days, it just started like left and right. Money was coming from all different kind of places. And I was like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so sometimes, what if you didn't have something? What if I had not gone to God? Yeah. Would I, I mean, have still been sitting there going, I have nothing. I'm about to be out on the street. You know? Well, I mean, like, even before, like, you know, when when you have, like, I don't have any children, but I imagine, I, when I grew up, my mom was fully aware of whether or not we had food in the in the kitchen, or whether or not we needed new clothes. Yeah. Do we not have a father who says that not not a feather falls from the sparrow, or not a sparrow falls from the ground, it falls from the sky even, and not a hair from your head, does he not know? by number does he not know the stars by name then how much more precious are you his son and his daughter you know in, in the subject in, in the subject of finances in many times where I've been in need it's either it's going to be like somebody comes and gives or the Lord brings work my way whether, whether that might be like, you know, uh, coaching or whether that might be uh, some freelance work or, you know, or the Lord will give me strategy because I have, a, you know, having skill sets that are, that are useful or the ability to teach. And the Lord will give me strategy and go, hey, like, you know, you have this. Why don't you go and do this? And want to, you know, want to, sometimes she'll say like, you know, just teach a class, you know, and that's, so, that sounds weird. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to probably step on some religious toes right now. I like, step on them. All I'm right. <laughs> I was like, you scared me for a second. I was like, what am I stepping on? And like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> let's, that's okay. Like. The Lord's at times has given me strategy to actually like, he'll be like, you know, I like teach the, teach this series of classes, like my prophetic reform classes. That was, that was something that the Lord gave me and he told me what, you know, you're going to do, you're going to do four of them and one of them's going to be free. And, but he gave and he, and he's like, and this is what you're going to charge and you're going to make, you know, make it Come accessible on. to people. You're going to make it affordable to people. Um, or like the, the class, you know, the, uh, the content development and strategy symposium that I'm doing. That I'm was so all, excited on that. I am too. Uh, and I wait. <laughs> and I, ju well, I just secured a, a graphic and web designer last night 
And so they're going to uh, offer their services at a discounted rate for everybody that's a part of uh, the, that class. And so, which is going to be awesome because I think there's going to be a lot of people that are like, uh, like they're called to write books or get their message out and they don't know how. And yeah. like, and I just see a lot of people figuring out how to actually do that for once. And I have a real simple, easy process for people to do that and get content out. Like people don't realize how easy it is to reverse engineer content. And so, wow. um, and so anyways, like, but the Lord t gave me that whole idea about doing it and what to call it. And like, and, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer and other times it doesn't, um, you know, and it's where, and in my position, like if we even looked at the nature of the office of a prophet or, or a seer, perhaps you would see that they often operated as consultants and oracles mm -hmm. to Kings, or you could put it as they operated as consultants to CEOs, people who are Ooh. running nations and they gate and they gave them heavenly strategy to actually, uh, you haven't missed it. Uh, someone just asked, uh, Candace, you haven't missed it. Um, yeah. I'll type in the link real quick. Um, but they often operated as, uh, sh sh you know, consultants to the king to give them the strategy of heaven to actually, right. uh, run the nation. Come on. And so like when, so when you look at that, like Joseph, yeah, like Joseph, he like kept the planet from dying. Well, like the, the way that the Lord gave, gave me the word about the, uh, the owl that just recently went out on Elijah list. Yeah. Uh, he actually like part of it was like Joseph and Daniel anointings that were working alongside Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar. And like, and when, when you think about who they are as individuals and working in the midst of the darkest of places, like God needs people in, in those arenas and he's raising up. And that's like, that's part of the vision that I'm actually, uh, that I'm developing even for my own ministry is something that I'm calling the house of prophets. <clears throat> and it's actually going to be an in-home training academy. Like oh where, goodness, wow. uh, I have a partner of mine who writes grants for, for, for ministry houses. And so I'm going to be able to create like an actual house of prophets and where I'm going to be able God. to raise and trade, train and raise up people because there are people doing big time stuff with the prophetic. It, it's, and honestly, it makes a lot of what we do seem so small. Like there's, <laughs> there's people in California that are rescuing like kidnapped victims and stuff like that. Come on. With That's the prophetic. Right. Elizabeth, They're in the trenches. Elizabeth, message me. You're trying to write a book for three years. Let me help you, Elizabeth. Let me help you. Actually, Elizabeth, message me and I'll put you in my class for free. So just message me and I'll, put, and I'll hook you up in my class that I'm teaching in June for free. And so, wow. um, listen, no one should be trying for three years to write a book. Let me help you. It's, yeah. It's actually, it's actually fairly easy. Um, Push that baby out. Right, push. <laughs> yeah. um, come on, and so we like just we have the. Ability